What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. Today in this video guys, we're going to talk to you about how to game this crystal airdrop. When I say game, I mean what is the best play? Should you stake your jewels? Should you LP? Should you farm? Should you summon? Should you go to avalanche and farm? What should you do? All right, I'm going to go ahead and break all this down. I'm going to crank out some numbers and bring out some math for you guys so you guys can understand how to make your own decisions. And I want to give kudos to uh, Sandwich Punch. He made a great article breaking it down, put out some rough sketch math so you guys can see what it looks like. But well, let's go ahead and get into it. First, let's break down Sandwich Punch's article as well as this Discord post that we just saw. So in this Discord post, it says, look, there's airdrops for X jewel holders. Uh, this is going to be for Crystal. So this is going to be 600K Crystal over snapshots between January 3rd and January 24th. They will also be giving away 25 shiny Gen Zero heroes uh, for Crystal Veil. So this is only to the X jewel holders remember you will be diluted uh with the crystals as more people are staking so keep that in mind players will receive one entry for 100 x jewels and two additional for every additional 100 x jewels so according to the average x jewel holdings between january 3rd to january 24th they will also do airdrops for hero owners so if you're owning heroes you will get one common two uncommon four rare or eight for legendary and 16 for mythic. So if you have two mythics, you'll get 32 crystal. If you have two commons, you'll get two crystal. So those are just set in stone numbers. So those are easier to calculate. Next, you have airdrops for hero summoners. So if you are going to summon heroes, these will result in one raffle entry for a summoner player to win a shiny gen zero hero now these are going to be 10 drawings for a total of 10 gen zero heroes now you will i'm i'm not saying you'll have a better chance but people are going to be speculating on the bank maybe people won't be summoning as many heroes these guys literally created a genius uh system on how this airdrop will work uh, you guys can see it in the token price. This is very well thought out. This isn't just something that's like, oh yeah, let's do this. Well, no, it's not because they incentivize X jewel holders by staking in the bank, but yet they incentivize summoning to keep people summoning and buying heroes. And then they even incentivize people going to other chains. It's It literally all works in one. So it's pretty interesting how it works. Um, the next one is airdrops for bridge jewel holders on Avalanche. So this one's only 100k crystal, but the pools over there are a lot smaller. Just stay tuned to the end of the video and you'll see what I'm talking about. I'll sum this all up and help you guys uh, break down the math so you guys can understand what you're getting into. So let's go ahead and talk about Sandwich Punch's article. He breaks down the same exact thing as well. Um, he kind of talks about airdrops for X jewel holders and basically 600K crystal are going to those who hold X jewel. Now this is specified based on 100 X jewels according to the average X jewel holding. So this is based on an average. Also the crystals for the heroes. So we already went over that. So Sandwich even uh, breaks down a couple of more facts. I think these are really important to understand. The first one is DeFi Kingdoms expanding to Avalanche is actually good news for everyone. A lot of people are like, no, it's going to be bearish. We're going to go bad on Jewel. Well, no, just look how they create everything. Everything's created around Jewel. And they've already said it in their AMAs. They're going to do any and everything they can to protect the prices of heroes as well as protect the prices of Jewels. Probably the same for Crystal, but just kind of mentioning they're protecting Jewel and heroes. That's also what the team holds. The team holds Jewel. So Crystal will have a fourth of the supply of Jewel. So the total supply is 125 million. So now that we have those numbers out there, we can kind of roughly estimate it's gonna be a, about 1%. Obviously this depends on the heroes because as the heroes are summoned more and more, it's going to go up. So right now you can see with the heroes, uh, we're probably at almost a hundred thousand um it's more about ninety thousand so you guys can put that into perspective um that's not factoring in whether it's mythic uh 
uh, common. We aren't really going to go into the math on that. That, that may just confuse a little more people. Um, so we're going to try to uh, do the math on, on what are some of the options you guys can use and what are the pros and cons of them. And obviously, this isn't going to be calculated in these airdrops. So for x -Jewel holders and for the summoners, you can't really calculate the value of that airdrop because if that Gen Zero hero is worth, let's say, I don't know, let's call it 5,000 Joule, you really can't calculate those returns. And of course, it's one of those things, it's going by a raffle, so you can't really do your best to get it. I mean, obviously you can get more entries, but it's not guaranteed, whereas like getting the crystal is guaranteed. So do you want to take the guaranteed approach where you can get a couple hundred dollars or a couple of crystal, or would you rather take the risky approach to where you could possibly get a really, really, really good reward? It's one of those things you want to do. It's it, it's tough. So now even uh, Sandwich, he does some what he is doing. Uh, he's trying to take a hedge approach. He's spreading his risk, uh, spreading his allocations, which is really smart because how they created this airdrop, you really don't know what to do. Like it, it's a win, a win, 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 each of the situations. So it, just just think about your decisions. And ultimately there, there could be one as well, like, hey, well, what if I sell Jewel right after the immediate pump and then buy Crystal? I mean, some people are even doing something like that. It's it's hard to um, game this one because they created such uh, sticky tokenomics and uh, such sticky airdrop incentives. Um, so let's go ahead and break down the math since you guys uh, are already waiting this long. So first, let's break down the math on the bank. So we're gonna go over to the bank. I'm gonna show you where I get these numbers. Uh, we got Ricky Bobby uh, doing our measurements on this. Ricky Bobby says, so here's the math on it. Um, as you can see, we're gonna hover over the bank. You can see the bank has actually, it's 283,699,860. That is in dollar value, that's not in Joule. Uh, the staking is actually in the gardens. So let's go and break down what we have on the staking, uh, well, in the bank. So if we go to the bank, uh, we're gonna go ahead and crank out the 283 number, divide that by the current Joule price of 1792. This will give us 15,820 Joule, or 820,368 Joule. Now we're gonna divide this by 600,000. The reason why we divide by 600,000 because that's the amount of crystal that is allocated to the bank. So that's basically one crystal for every 26.36 joule. This is not X joule, this is for joule. To get the X joule amount, you're just gonna have to divide that by 1.648, which is this number right here. And that will give us about 16 joules. So you guys can keep those numbers into perspective. Now, we have the math on that. That basically means we need 26 joule for one crystal. Now, if we factor in, okay, the heroes are going to get one crystal, or uncommon is two, rare is four, legendary is eight, and mythic is 16. So we can theoretically say the commons are gonna be 26 joule, where the uncommons are going to be 52 joule. So obviously it would be worth a summon on the uncommon, not financial advice. And that's going to give you also, that's also going to give you an entry into the raffle for the 10 heroes. So if you, if you summon a common, you're barely going to break even on the crystal because you're still going to get that um, snapshot for the airdrop. So with that information, you can basically, if you get a common, almost break even because if you summon with a gen one, 10 out of 10, you're going to have to spend 32 Joule. And if you factor in uh, the common, it's going to get one crystal, uh, AKA 26 Joule. You'll actually be losing about six Joule on that play. Um, but everything is kind of like a give and take. So that's why I'm saying they, they literally created it to where it's like, man, because you got to factor in, you can also get an uncommon, you can get a rare, you can get a legendary, you can get a mythic and then it'll just boost it tremendously. So TLDR is you can't really game this on these, but you can factor in if you diversify and spread around, it actually spreads the uh, chances uh, to other uh, spots. Let's go and do the math for the gardens. 
This is for the TVL and the gardens. As you can see here, the TVL is actually 709 million, actually 710 million now. So I actually did the math on 975. Um, so it's actually about $3,000. No, it's about $2,800 per crystal. With the math, you actually do about 710 uh, million divided by the 300,000 because remember, the 300,000 crystal is the allocation to all the LP farms. And that'll give you about $2,800 per crystal. So that means if you have, uh, let's see, $5,600 inside the LP farms, you're gonna get two crystal. If you have uh, 2,800, you're gonna get one. Now, I know you're saying like, what the snap, this is trash, I'm pulling all my LPs out now. Don't forget, these are farming and earning you jewel which you could stake in the bank to earn X jewel, which the X jewel also gets into the snapshot. So it's like a give and take, and it's not something that's a like a one all be all. That's why I'm saying they literally hit every avenue in this aspect. And that doesn't even factor in, you can be earning with the gardens, uh, if you guys have some questers going about that, and playing around with the heroes to constantly be earning you an income. Now, let's go ahead and break down the avalanche pool. This one actually looks pretty juicy to me because there's only 2.592 million inside this pool. Now, this one is getting an allocation of 100,000 crystal. Now, if you factor in that math, whereas in the gardens, you have 710 million, that is literally a 360, no, I, I would say that's about a 300 X um, compared to the two. <laughs> so if you factor that in, that's like, wait, there's so much more allocation going to Avalanche as the gardens in Harmony One are being diluted. However, this can simply change by a whale just coming over and these snapshots are just an average of time for this, uh, basically you can say the rest of January. So it's not something that's like, oh, I'll move my funds now and then I'll move it later. Because if you do the math on the Avalanche pool, which is 2.592 million divided by 100,000 crystal, because they're allocating 100,000 crystal to that pool. That means you only have to have $25.92 for every one crystal compared to the 2,800. Now, I know you're saying, wait, I would rather go to the avalanche pool. Hang on, look at the APRs, and these are not paid in jewel. These are paid in pangolin. Yes, you can sell it for jewel, but still the point is, is the APRs are 43%, whereas in the gardens, 640, 601, 555, these APRs are a lot higher. So it's not something that's just like, boom, done. But if you're going based on the crystal basis, it would actually, in this perspective, be a bit better on Avalanche at this point in time. This could simply change in a snap. So TLDR, it is either better to summon and hope you get the luck, as in like you get a mythic or legendary or a rare, in my opinion, or going or throwing some into the avalanche pools based on the dollar to dollar ratio. If this goes up too fast, then obviously it's not worth it. But if no one's going over there, then well, it's worth it, not financial advice. Um, also, another thing, this does not include airdrops for snapshots, and this doesn't factor in your impermanent loss you could be receiving going over to the avalanche pools. Yes, you are going to see impermanent loss in the gardens as well, but the point is, is the APRs are way higher and it's paid in jewel inside the gardens on DFK. So it's tough and I know this can change at any time. So depending on what you summon, it is really all a numbers game going back to the summons because if you summon a common, you're actually going to be losing uh, some compared to crystal. However, if you summon an uncommon or plus, you are actually going to be making more. Because remember, uh, right now the snaps for the bank, it's based about 26 jewel per one crystal. And how much does it cost to summon one common with the 10 out of 10 gen one? It's only 32 jewel. So you're actually gonna lose six jewel in that transaction because you have you get the point, 26 minus 32 is six. Um, but if you summon an uncommon, you're actually gonna get a little more crystal. So it's it's kind of a game of luck and it's math too. So it, it's kind of tough to understand.
I'll also leave a link in the description below for Sandwich Punch's article. Uh, make sure you guys give him a follow. He gives a lot of DFK alpha. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, there's a link in the description below if you guys would be interested in joining the Patreon. Uh, that is the Discord membership. It is the VIP membership. Uh, that will give you exclusive access to some videos I don't show on YouTube as well as strategies and things I'm doing in the market as well as some more DFK alpha and other videos like this. Hope to see you guys in the Discord. So that's just some information and math you guys can use. Of course, this is subject to change, but TLDR, it's good to be diversified and uh, try each of them, not financial advice. Um, just being able to have some of the snaps with the heroes and the bank is definitely going to help. And these, these guys really thought about the tokenomics very strong. I want to give kudos and props to them. Um, thanks for tuning in, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, let's go ahead and leave you guys with a wisdom one-liner. Proverbs chapter 21, verses 15. When justice is done, it brings joy to the righteous, but terror to evildoers. It's true, man. We got to have a good justice system. There's sometimes people get away with junk, and it ain't right. You guys can also catch me on tweeters. Uh, it's at rent a home fast, like literally at rent a home fast.